Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. Today I'm going to be doing a review mainly of these two laptops, the Lenovo 14W against the HP 14, really stupid name that I'll have in the description that I can't remember. Uh, I've been using both these laptops against each other for the past couple of weeks as I've taken a chance to really try to get to know them and be familiar with them and how they how they work, how they function. Um, because in a lot of ways they're very similar. They come in at fairly similar prices. The Lenovo uh, is has been cheaper uh, when it was on sale for the holiday season. Uh, I have seen it as cheap as $130. Depending on uh, the deal, it does go up to about $250. The HP is between $100, or excuse me, between $200 and $280 again, depending on what deal you can find when you go to uh, purchase it. So, like I said, I've been using both of them, and there's things I definitely like about both of them, and things that I don't like about both of them. What I've done now is I have done a performance benchmark on all of them. And I have my P43 ThinkPad just as an example of a, a workstation laptop, because I get asked a lot of questions, specifically like, can you do video editing on this laptop? And I'll answer that, that question here in a little bit. Going up first off, uh, just looking at the screen, they both have 14 inch screens. The 14W is a 1920 by 1080 screen, whereas the HP only has a 1366 by 768 resolution screen. This is HD, this is full HD, and it is an obvious difference in resolution between the two. You can fit a lot more on the 14 inch screen of the Lenovo versus the HP. The Lenovo also has a matte screen, which I prefer much more to the more glossy screen of the HP. It makes a big difference, especially if you're outdoors or if you're in a room with bright lights, uh, you'll get a lot of glare off of the HP that you simply won't get off of the Lenovo. As far as the keyboards, this is one where I actually prefer the HP keyboard ever so slightly more than the one on the Lenovo. The reason being are the arrow keys. Uh, the Lenovo has the page up and page down right above the number of keys, or excuse me, the right and left keys. Uh, the up and down keys on both of them are significantly shorter and that to me is a mistake. I hate that design personally. It makes the arrow keys kind of frustrating to use, uh, especially if you're doing any kind of gaming or any work where you're using those uh, directional keys uh, much at all. Other than that, the keyboards have a fairly similar feel to them. They're both okay to type on, nothing to write home about, but definitely in the usable category for typing. The touchpad the win goes to the HP simply because they both have very similar sized trackpads but the HP does come in with two physical buttons that's a personal preference for me I miss having the physical right and left click on the touchpad the HP also has a slight raise on either side of the touchpad so you know when you hit the sides the Lenovo is more uh, on the same plane so there is a ridge there, but it's a lot more noticeable on the HP when you're using it. Neither of them have very good palm rejection. It is there and it kind of works. It's just on more expensive machines, I've found that to be better. Now let's talk a little bit about performance. The Lenovo has the A6 processor. The HP has the A9 processor. And that's why I bought the HP is because I really wanted to see what the difference between the two was and if it was worth that upgrade. And on a purely CPU basis, no. I don't think it's worth the upgrade. Uh, I did do benchmarks for both of these and the Lenovo did get a slightly lower uh, 3D mark uh, performance. And I think a big part of that is because it is having to drive a higher resolution screen. Even when I drop the resolution, it's still having to fill in more pixels, and I think that hurts performance quite a bit. This pad under here is a cooling pad. It's a fan that I bought on Amazon for, I think, $9.99. And that's another difference between the two. I'll go ahead and turn this off because it's kind of loud. The 
Lenovo is passively cooled. There is no fan, whereas the HP is actively cooled, so there's a fan, and it keeps the laptop at much more reasonable temperatures than the Lenovo gets to. The Lenovo does start to thermal throttle when you start to push it. I did the performance test a few different times in a row, and it definitely thermal throttled and slowed down significantly. And at one point, I had a score for the CPU mark right now. It's showing a 2169. It got down to like a 1500 because it just was, it got too hot and the system did slow down. Now, I don't notice that too much in daily use, but it is something to factor if you're using the system for, you know, if you're pushing, if you're watching a lot of videos or you're doing anything that requires 3D graphics, anything like that, uh, it, it will have an effect on the system. But where the biggest difference between the two lies is actually in the storage. And I think that's where you'll feel the slowness a lot more with the Lenovo over the HP is the fact that the Lenovo is using eMMC storage. It's basically like having an SD card for your storage. You get very similar speeds and it's not great. Whereas the HP is actually using an NVMe M.2 SSD. And so it has excellent storage performance uh, for the system. And so uh, it has a score that is literally 10 times higher than the Lenovo, and it shows. And it shows in uh, just your everyday use. Things load faster, uh, the computer responds faster. Even though the CPU is only slightly more powerful, it makes a big difference. And, you know, and you'll see that here if we go to Cinebench. The scores are different. Obviously, the Lenovo does have a slightly slower CPU. It's at A6 versus an A9. It runs a slightly slower uh, frequency. Uh, but you'll see the score is 231 points on the Lenovo and 286 points on the HP. It is a difference, but not a huge difference. And not a big enough difference that I would say, yes, definitely, uh, it is a big enough difference that this is the one you absolutely should buy. But what the difference is, is the fact that this one does run the M.2 storage. You can upgrade it, where this one you cannot. You can also increase the RAM on this. It has two RAM slots. Uh, and I was able to add additional RAM to the HP, which makes it, in my opinion, a far superior machine to the HP, uh, to the Lenovo. So, you know, the HP is superior to the Lenovo for those two big reasons, the upgradable storage, or replaceable storage, and the upgradable and replaceable memory. Uh, I still really like the Lenovo, and if you can find it for that sub $200 price mark, especially that sub $150 price mark, I would recommend this laptop every single day of the week. Uh, and we'll do some gaming on it in another video. This is just more of a benchmarking video and performance, overall performance of the system. Whereas this one, the HP, if you can find it under that $250 mark, is definitely the my, gets my recommendation. Once it gets close to that $300 mark, I, there's it starts to get into the category where you can find some i3 uh, processors and things like that. So I struggle to recommend this one above $250. Also, at that price point, you're looking at being able to buy some used laptops that are very good quality and very good performers for that amount of money in very good condition. One thing that the HP also has over the Lenovo is it has more ports. It has mainly a an Ethernet port on there. And so I'm actually going to be doing some LAN parties here in the coming weeks with some friends. And so this one will get used in that party. And this one won't because even though they're older games and play on this laptop just fine, I can't connect to a network. Everything is going to be over LAN and not Wi-Fi. And so we're going to be using this one in that. The reason why I have my ThinkPad, like I said, obviously it's a much, much higher end machine. People ask me all the time, like I said, can I edit on these? Can I do picture and video editing on these? And the answer is yes, you can, but would you want to? And my answer to that is probably not. So with the Lenovo, I started the Cinebench benchmark running and I thought, oh, I should grab my Lenovo and do it, uh, do performance benchmarks on that. So in the time it took me to do the Cinebench on the Lenovo, I was able to boot the Lenovo, excuse me, boot my ThinkPad, run Passmark, 
have it give me an error after it was done, go and update the drivers, run Passmark a second time, and run the Cinebench benchmark, then go have lunch with my family, <laughs> come back before this one was done. It takes so long. It was at least 45 minutes to an hour to run the Cinebench benchmark on these two laptops. No joke, it took forever to run. We're on the uh, ThinkPad. It was 10 minutes. Um, it, it, you could do video editing on these, especially with the um, 1080 screen of the uh, Lenovo. The problem is, once you actually go to render it or anything like that, the overall performance is so slow, you have to factor in how much is your time worth. And the fact that with the ThinkPad, I would be able to edit two or three videos in the time that it takes to render one video with one of these, that to me makes these not worth it for that task. These are not the right tools for that job. You definitely want to be looking at you know, a, a, a newer used computer with a Core i5, i7 processor that can handle those tasks a lot more. These are perfect for people who are checking YouTube, checking Facebook, responding to emails, you know, those basic web tasks. You want to play some older games, you want to play some emulators, perfect for this. You're writing a lot of uh, Word documents, you need a battery that lasts you all day long. I haven't done a battery test on this HP yet, but it has a fairly significant battery life. I think the Lenovo is better on that. This Lenovo I've literally run for 10 hours straight doing my normal uh, daily tasks, you know, emails, YouTube, that sort of stuff, responding to comments on my videos, things like that. 10 hours, no problems on the Lenovo. My P43 does not get even where near that. Uh, probably closer to like that four to five hour mark if I'm not pushing it. Uh, but it's a obviously a lot more powerful machine. So it really comes in what you're going to be doing. So if I know like this holiday season, uh, I had a day where um, I was working from home and I needed to be able to be away from my desk with family but still be able to get work done. And so I took with me the Lenovo because I was able to type, respond to emails, and do all the things I needed to do for my work without having to be near a charging port or have to rely on my charger. I could go from room to room watching kids and being with family, things like that, and still be able to work. And I could not have done that with my ThinkPad. Uh, again, I didn't do that with this computer because it was the day I was using this one. So. Uh, I will do a battery test with the HP. In fact, if you're interested, I'll do it with all three of these laptops um, here in the next few days. Just let me know in the comment section. So again, that is just an overall performance review of these two laptops. A little bit of insight from the P43. Uh, and I will be doing some gaming on these in the coming uh, week or so. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, whatever, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer those, and I hope you have an amazing day.